All right. Welcome. And thank you for tuning in to episode 90 on the Healthy Runner podcast. And we are live within the Healthy Runner Facebook group talking about running clothes for women with style. And I am super excited to bring on the show runner, fashionista, run coach, and marathoner, Shauna Miller from Stiletto Running. Welcome to the show, Shauna. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Excited yeah, to no. be here. <laughs> oh, we are super excited. I know your running gear is super popular and super cute. So mother runners out there, I want to know, um, do you always look for running clothes and you've been like frustrated with a lack of stylish running gear out there? Um, does everything just look too plain or too much like, you know, regular plain running clothes. Like it's not fun. And you just want to go out there and look cute and you want to enjoy wearing your running clothes, even when you're not running. Well, this is one episode you will want to stick around for because Shauna from Stiletto Running has the solution for you. In this episode, you are going to meet the mother runner and mom boss behind the popular brand of Stiletto Running. And she will share with you how she became a runner how she shaved an amazing 38 minutes off her marathon time to run a 349 time and qualify for Boston and grew an amazing running clothing company for women. She will also chat about the struggles she has faced as a runner, whether it was getting a VQ um, by a comfortable margin just to have it taken away um, by last year's historical 747 record cutoff or struggling with a running injury like so many of you probably listening to this podcast and having to undergo an unplanned uh, surgery. So we're going to get into all that. I know this chat is going to be super inspiring for those master runners, right? So those middle-aged runners like us, um, Shauna, and I don't think, you know, or especially if you think you can't accomplish a big running goal. So if you stick around to the end of this, Shauna is actually going to share an amazing gift for our healthy runner community. So Shauna, the first question that we ask all our guests and how we start off every episode was a little dynamic warm up because that's what we need to do as runners. <laughs> and uh, so tell us, where are you from and what do you do? So I am originally from the Boston area and I currently live in Middlebury, Connecticut. And we've been here for just 15 years. Um, it's crazy how fast time flies. <laughs> um, and I am a runner and the owner and designer of Stiletto Running, um, primarily a female running apparel brand. I do have some unisex sizing styles um, that certainly men could wear too. Um, and yeah, I mean, I started Stiletto Running in 2016. So just about six years now or five years. That's awesome. And yeah, like the five year mark is super like, that's like a big, that's like a big milestone. So we just hit our four year kind of anniversary actually like a couple of weeks ago. So five years, congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> so I guess, you know, I should probably share how we did meet um, Shauna and I, even though we actually live like fairly close to each other. And Shauna, we were just talking, actually does a lot of her training runs in my town in Cheshire here. Um, we actually met in Rhode Island uh, during a race. So <laughs> we met at the Surf Town Half Marathon. And the reason why we did meet is because I was pretty much looking at Shauna's back, like most of the race. And I was like, wow, man, this girl's killing it. And I was like, man, I'm just trying to like keep up with her. And, you know, she wound up finishing just before me and she like crushed that hard half marathon that I kind of <laughs> shared the details of last week. Yeah. What did you think about that, um, um, that day? Yeah, it was a hard day. Um, this is the third time I think I've run surf down and that stretch from mile four to seven is pretty much windy. Anytime I've run the race, but this year was um, not fun, <laughs> right? It was about three miles of, I don't know, 15 to 18 mile per hour headwinds. And it was just, I mean, you were fighting that pace. And it, once you got past that, I, it, it killed me the rest of the race. It definitely took a lot out of me to 
fight through to the end. <laughs> okay, because this hard. is good. <laughs> this is good because this is my first time um, running um, surf down. So, okay. Uh -huh. So this was harder than it normally is. I, I think so. Yeah. The wind okay. was horrible this time. Um, how about temperature I've, and humidity? I was going to say, yeah, anytime I've run it, it's been hot and sticky. Yeah. Okay. So I, I haven't had a great race there in terms of I've never felt so great. Um, it's always too hot for me. It's windy. Uh, but I keep coming back for it. I, <laughs> I know. know wow. That, wow. <laughs> it's yeah, beautiful though. Back. It is. It is. You keep yeah. coming back for more. Um, yeah. And I shared last week how we just like love, we go up there like once a week, usually the family um, to vacation for a couple of days. This year we went up for Father's Day weekend um, and we stayed at a little place right there on the beach, San Castle Inn. And I was like, I would love to always run in this town. And cause I always do my training runs, like when we go on uh, vacation yeah. and I've run those streets before. And I was like, it'd be cool to do the surf town half. And usually I run um, New Haven. So, you know, to run two races back to back weekends, obviously very tough. So, uh, this year I was like, all right, this year I'm not running New Haven. I'm going to do surf town. It's on my bucket list. So I, yeah, I was wondering if it is kind of hot and humid, like every year. So it is pretty sticky, yeah, just not as is. windy. Yes. I haven't okay. experienced the wind as bad, but it notoriously is a warm weekend. And then you have that awesome hill at mile nine and that just <laughs> kills you. <laughs> yeah. Those hill. hills. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those hills toward the end were definitely uh, pretty brutal. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I definitely noticed you on the course because of honestly your gear and uh. you know, it definitely <laughs> catches some attention. And I was like, Oh, those are cool shorts. Those are a cool pattern. You know, like, come on, when you're out on the course for, you know, an hour and 40 minutes, right. you're like a lot of stuff's going through your head, right? You're just kind of yeah. keeping the mind busy. I'm like, Oh, those are cool shorts, you know, and, <laughs> um, I'm glad that we got to talk after and then kind of connected. Um, and I, I saw all the, you know, neat gear that you do have, um, before we get into, um, some of that, you know, can you share just for the listeners, you know, kind of when your running journey began, um, were you always a runner? I was not always a runner. Um, I was turning 40 and became friendly with a group of women at my gym and they were all, marathoners, Ironman and triathletes. And, um, you know, I thought, oh, maybe this would be kind of fun as a bucket list turning 40. Maybe I'll run a half marathon. <laughs> I had never run. Um, you know, I dabbled with a few days on the treadmill, a few miles. So, but I never considered myself a runner and I had never run on the road. I'd never run outside. Um, so I downloaded a Hal Higdon Same. training plan and yeah, I mean, I guess, as they say, the rest is history. I just, I ran that first half marathon and thought I was going to die and said, oh my God, I never want to do it again. And, you know, two days later, signed up for another one. <laughs> so yeah. So I've been running, I just turned 50 in April. So I've been running for 10 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And your Thank 10 you. year run anniversary. Yes. Another thing <laughs> that we have in common, I uh, just passed my 10 year run anniversary as well. Oh, and cool. I was always a gym rat and I never ran ever besides being, you know, sports as a kid. And yeah, same thing. It was, I used to run on the treadmill for kind of cardio, right. To like lean out. Yep. And yep. I wound up actually getting hip surgery and, you know, it was a torn labrum wow. and they did a little repair and, you know, the surgeon was like, yeah, just don't run on the treadmill. And I was like, really? That's all I do. Mm -hmm. And it was like yeah. literally January. Right. And you know, the weather here in Connecticut in January, of course. And he's like, yeah, run outside. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I'm like, <laughs> I've never run outside ever. And now you're telling me to like go outside in January. And, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where it was cold and I was like, okay, this is actually pretty cool to like be outside and like work a sweat in like the winter. And then, yeah, I just got hooked and, you know, continued like you. So yeah, uh, there's like so many, uh, similarities in, uh, some of our kind of running journey, but yours has really, really taken off here. So when you started, um, you know, getting into the half marathon, then you, when did you run your first marathon? How, how many years into running? Um, a little over a year, less than a year. And a, yeah. My first, actually about a year and a half. Yeah. My first half was, um, what used to be the iron horse half in yep. Simsbury. Um, it's now, what is it? The Yukon health. Yukon, half now. Yep. Um, yeah. And then a year 
not that fall, but the following fall, I ran Philly marathon in 2012. Okay. And that was my first fall marathon. Nice. I hear that's a really yeah. good one, right? I know so it's many people who do one. that as a first. Yeah. Yeah. It was a um, great marathon and I would definitely recommend it for a first. Just the crowd is amazing. Um, and I think the year after or two years after I went back to do the half in Philly. Um, but I would like to do the fall again because now 10 years later and it being my first one, I don't remember it so much. So I would like to go back and do it again. Nice. Yeah, you definitely should. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, as you were going along in your running journey, like at what point did you decide, because you just mentioned that stiletto running has been five years now. So like, mm -hmm. what was the genesis behind that in why you did start um, stiletto running? Um, so I had worked in the fashion industry uh, prior to having my kids. And then I became a stay at home mom. And so they, when I started running, they both were in school full time at that point. So after five years of running and kids in school, I was like, all right, I'm a little bored. I think I need something to keep myself busy, but um, also wanted to be home for my kids. And just, I don't know, a light went off in my head. Like I just, I love fashion. I fell in love with running and thought, you know what, I'm going to see if I can try to combine the two and just kind of see what happens. And I felt like at first, maybe for the first year or so, it was more of like a hobby and just a fun thing. And then it just kept expanding and became an actual real business. So yeah, it's, um, I, and just, you know, I would see running and races. And like you said, at the beginning, I would see people just running in all black. And I, it's funny because and you can see, um, if I'm not running clothes, for, uh, most of the time I'm in white, black, gray, very basic, um, neutral, but running, I just felt like, you know, it's such a fun sport. And I do like striking up conversations with people in races, as, as you know. Um, it was just something to bring attention, you know, on a race course and get noticed for and the bright colors. And so, yeah, that's I love pretty it. much and how I, I started. I just, yeah, just became inspired by seeing other people and what they were wearing and um, what I thought could be more fun on the race course than just basic running gear. Did you wind up like testing out some stuff on your own and like only you wore it? And then you just like people, I would imagine, like came up to you at races and was like, oh, where'd you get that? Yes. So when I first started, um, my first collection, my first design was um, all hot pink and black. And a lot of the reason too, when I started out with the neon pink was, and you know, running in Connecticut and on the roads, the cars, I wanted to be seen. Um, I felt like if you're wearing dark colors, there were, you know, more of a chance of getting hit by a car. So I did want the cars and the bikers to be able to see me from afar. So that was kind of where my head was at when I first started. Um, and I did come out with the first collect collection and people were stopping me at races and asking me, you know, where did I get it? And so, like I said, it kind of was a hobby at the beginning. And then after people started questioning me on race courses and after a race, that's when I said, okay, I think maybe there's something here. So that's how it kept going. Yeah, that is so cool. Um, I just love how it's, you know, your business started organically through a hobby. Um, again, very similar to kind of my business. Um, I did not, or even honestly, this podcast, um, our healthy runner community, none of this was in a five point business plan. None of this was mm -hmm. planned out. Um, it really just started organically. And I can tell by, um, you know, what I've seen on Instagram, on your Instagram handle and everything is, it's just genuine and authentic and um, you can tell. And I just love, I love hearing like other stories like that, that just kind of start organically. And isn't it just so rewarding to be able to do something you love for work? And like, yeah. you know, it's, it's just like amazing <laughs> feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, and like, I, like I said, it wasn't, I, I had no plan. And I, not that I don't have a plan now, but it is like trial and error and figuring out what works and figuring out what people, what people like or don't like. And, you know, some designs are a flop and some I can't keep in stock. So 
it is trial and error and it's great. And it is so rewarding. Um, especially Instagram has been a huge platform for me. Um, when I started the stiletto running Instagram page, it solely was for my business. And at the beginning, it was just pictures of my merchandise. But then I found the more people, um, wanted to know more about me and the person behind my brand, that's when my stuff started selling even more. So I, you know, kind of had to tweak my stiletto running Instagram page and put a little bit more of myself out there. And that seemed to sell the brand. So people do, they want to, they want to know what you're doing behind the scenes and who you are and, you know, um, everything's not always rosy. It's not, <laughs> you know, so I think that's stuff like that certainly helps to sell a brand when they know the person behind it. Exactly. So meaning you're human, right? There's actually yes. a human who is pulling the levers here and actually creating the awesome clothing that you have. And I just love that. And that's why I wanted to bring you on today because, you know, podcasting is this long form, right? So people are going to get mm -hmm. to know you for like an hour today, hopefully during their run, they're like crushing their run and they're like seeing your posts and maybe have some of your gear, but really don't know the behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. About um, the owner of Stiletto Running. So that's why I wanted to bring you on here. And I just want to give a little shout out to our live Facebook audience, just because these guys show up like every week. Um, I just want to give them a shout out. Coach Whitney is here. What's going on, Coach? Kristen, thank you so much for uh, hopping on here. Kristen is running her first Boston and she's ready to crush that. You might have seen her on the trail actually this uh, <laughs> past weekend. Um, Stephanie yeah. says, hi, Shauna. Um, Cheryl, Cheryl is here on the live. Christy's here. Uh, Christy was super pumped about this. Uh, she put some stiletto emojis in her comment. And uh, <laughs> Coach Whitney is on our Healthy Runner team, and she's been following your page actually for a while. Yes. And she just loves everything about running fashion and gear. So this was like all up her alley and she was super excited <laughs> to like do the promo post, uh, for this. And so I know she's excited about this and Trisha's here on the live. Julianne, what's going on? How are you? Thanks for joining. And Kathleen's here. Teresa, what's going on? Um, Teresa just crushed her log run. So congrats to you, uh, Denise. Thanks for jumping on here. And Joe, thanks for jumping on the live here. Um, as you guys are listening, if you have any questions for Shauna at all, just like drop them in the comment box. We'll do our best to get to those um, during the interview. Um, so Shauna, I want to know, like you have some sayings on your shirts. We go to your website and you've got some really, really like interesting sayings. Like some of the examples for those listening on the podcast and you can't check it out. Um, I can run 26.2 parking far. I don't do. Um, I love that. <laughs> That's just like so true actually. And even for like us runners, like for me, I've been there like long run and then I'll like avoid stairs. I'll be like, no, I got to save my legs. Like I'm going to take right. the elevator. And they're like, wait, you're a runner. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is like recovery. Like I, yeah. I need to, <laughs> um, Baby got track. I like that one. And then uh, run fast, run. Oh, run fast, run hard. No mercy. Oh, I love that one. That was just a nice little Cobra Kai reference there. Yes. For those. Uh, I love it. Um, so yeah. all these sayings that you have, like, where do you get the inspiration uh, for these sayings? Um, numerous places. The one about the parking far is actually because my husband... <laughs> <laughs> has told me that I'm the laziest marathoner. Um, we'll go, you know, to the mall or the grocery store and he'll just pull into the parking lot and park as soon as he finds a spot. And I'm like, why are we parking so far away? I, I don't want to walk. Like I just had a long run or right. I have a long run tomorrow. So yeah. So that's the joke. He's like, well, you just ran 20 miles. You don't want to walk, you know, a hundred feet to the door. I'm like, no, I want to, I want to save my legs or my legs are tired. So I want to get the closest parking spot. So yeah, so that's where that came from. Um, trying to think. Um, I did have a contest with my ambassadors um, about six months ago, and or maybe a little bit longer during, probably during lockdown. Um, I threw out a contest to them, and I said, "I want to come up with some new sayings inspired by your favorite show that you're binging during lockdown." And so I know some of my favorite shows were Cobra Kai, um, Handsmaid Tale. Um, so we had a contest and actually that 
run, run hard, run fast, no mercy. Um, an ambassador came up with that one. So that was a good it. one. Um, and then the tank I wore today um, in my post, um, Alexa, go for my run. Um, that hit, like I always make a joke with my husband. I'm like, I wish if I just asked Alexa if she would just do my laundry. And you know, there's those mornings, like today I woke up and I really, I don't know, I had a hard tempo on my plan and I, oh, I was tired and I was like, oh, I wish I could tell Alexa to go for my run today. So yeah, so things like that, that just come up in like everyday life. And I kind mm -hmm. of put that spin on it. Um, and the pretty little potty mouth collection um, with the not so nice words. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just, I don't know. I have a toilet mouth sometimes. And that word has just, I mean, as a runner, I mean, I don't know what runner has like run a race and come to the end of the finish and not been like swearing in their head. Like they're just, you know, or you cross and you just feel like that superstar and you're just, you know, so proud of yourself. So that's where that line kind of came from. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, every runner has thought that. So even if you don't say it out loud, um, right. you definitely <laughs> thought it. So I, yeah, I, cause I think you actually wore that shirt on the day mm -hmm. of the half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, yeah, that, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that is true. And Could be did. offensive or. <laughs> and you did slay it. I was like, you were running like marathon pace. I'm running like a half marathon race space over here and you still smoked me. <laughs> I was uh, like, yeah, you did mess things up over here. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Kristen says she wears her potty mouth tank uh, for her hilly runs. So she yes. strategically uh, picks that one for the hilly runs. Um, <laughs> I love it. Love I it. love it. Yeah. So what was the clothing item that got like the most traction early on? Um, Probably my running tights. That's pretty much what I started with. Um, and crazy enough, during right at the beginning of the pandemic, I came out with a shirt that said socially distant distance runner. And my husband laughed at me. He's like, that's kind of stupid. He was like, I don't, you think anyone's going to buy it? I'm like, I don't know. I, he's like, well, this is, you know, I mean, we all thought like the pandemic was a two week thing and we'd all be back to our life. Right. Um, but who knew? And it literally ended up being my best selling shirt for 2020. So that, yeah, or I mean, one of my best selling shirts in the five years, like that shirt, just I couldn't keep it in stock. So yeah, I, and you know, sometimes it's like you don't even know, and you have to try, you know? So that one was quite I love the winner it. And last year. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw your tights and your website. Can you describe for the listeners who are probably out on a run right now, what makes your tights different than like normal tights? So when I first started, um, I knew I wanted like wild patterns. And when I was playing around with graphics, I, it was almost too much on two legs, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So I thought, you know what, what if I do one leg that's a solid color and the other leg is the wild pattern pattern. And, um, it, that kind of took off and I've had people tell me like, there's nothing out there like that. Most tights are either all solid or all pattern. So I thought that was somewhere that I could have my niche and like, you know, my niche and something that was different than everybody else's tights out there. So, right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and it definitely makes a statement. Right. And mm -hmm. I bet I would imagine, you know, you get like some runners to like go to a race and they have them on and then they see another runner. You're like stiletto running. Right. Yeah. Right. You're like you're <laughs> part of the club. You're like, yeah, that's my thing. And then, yeah. um, so you would say was the, the socially distanced, um, runner saying kind of the most pop, is that still the most popular now? No, I think now that we're all kind of getting back to our lives and not running across the street when we see another runner like we did last year. Um, yeah, I, you know, I sold out the last one and that was it. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to see those shirts again. I want right, us exactly. to be able to <laughs> be at races and not have to distance ourselves, you know? So yeah, it, it, it did its job. And um, sadly enough, it was a funny saying during a hard time for everybody last year. Um, but it, you know, I would go to run on the Cheshire trail wearing it and um, you know, people would laugh. I could, you know, or, I love that shirt. That's so funny. You know, it, it, 
spoke to the moment. So right. yeah, so that one's retired and I hope to never bring that one back. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is, is the most popular right now or like this past summer? Um, the new sweatshirt that I have on. Okay. What, is, what do we got there? Describe it for ma- those who are not marathoner. watching. Yep. Oh, marathoner um, in a circle. It says 26.2 in the middle. And tie-dye has been super popular um, over the past year and a half or so. So I have a bunch of different tie-dye items. Um, and I also did this in the half marathoner, the 13.1. Um, so it's in the black and white tie-dye. And I have a pink, white, and blue tie-dye sweatshirt. And also in um, a tank. And I think it's probably doing well right now because all the half marathons and marathons are happening this fall, finally. Um, handful are getting canceled. But for the most part, people are starting to race long distance races right now. So I think it's uh, everyone's pretty excited to be able to buy some new gear for their fall races. <laughs> Absolutely. Like who doesn't want to get a like something to celebrate, right? Like your race that you've been waiting 18 months for or a year yeah. or two years for. Um, that yeah. was like actually me at Surftown. I was like, all right, I'm definitely getting something. Like I haven't run this race <laughs> ever. It's been on my bucket list, right? So I'm like, yeah. I was like, I'm definitely getting something here um, to commemorate this, right? So for those, I know there are so many runners, there's so many like on our team, Healthy Runner coaching program or in one of our coaching programs that they're running their first marathon, first half marathon, like check out this gear because this gear is very fashionable. Um, so it might be something you can commemorate, uh, after your run and you can rock and be like, all right, yep. I'm a marathoner or I did 13.1. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's <laughs> definitely uh, really neat. So what would you say makes stiletto running different than, you know, us just going to the outlets and going to the Nike outlet or the Under Armour outlet, or maybe going to our big box store or sports, uh, you know, store where, we probably take our kids to and, uh, right. you know, get some of the, the, the running gear there. What makes, um, stiletto running different? Um, few things. Um, I'm a one woman show, so everything I do is designed by me, um, packed by me. I mean, everything I put a personal note into everyone's order. Um, I have an ambassador team, which is not only, just the brand, but I have a bunch of women out there repping the merchandise. And we're also a team of women that support each other and inspire other people. And we inspire each other and just cheerlead for each other. Um, So it's not even just the brand of clothing. I've created a team of women that really are out there inspiring other women to feel good about themselves and put on cool running gear that make you feel good about yourself when you're going out for a run. So there's that, that aspect that I love that I created to have all of these women and camaraderie and friendships that have been formed um, amongst all these women. And in the past, I've probably had anywhere from 80 to hundred women on the team. And I actually just sent my emails out before we got on the phone um, announcing the new team. So we have 66 returning ambassadors from previous years. And I've, about 125 new women coming onto the team. So we're going to have about 200 women. Yeah. So it's exciting. That's amazing. That's amazing. (laughs) That is amazing. And I can't believe, wow. So you're like a one woman show doing it all, um, inspiring other women who are runners. I love it. I love it. I love it. As a dad of two daughters, I just love, you know, just seeing, you know, women do like what you're doing and being successful and like, you know, just, going out there, taking a risk. Right. And I'm sure Mm -hmm. definitely was scary, right. To get back into the (laughs) workforce and not go back to the safe job of like fashion industry that you were in before kids. And I just love that. Um, I love, I love everything about that. And if you don't mind, since you mentioned it, the ambassador program, is that something that like you do on an annual basis, or if someone was interested in being an ambassador, can they still do that for this year? Or is it like next summer or something like that? Yeah, so I, it's um, usually once a year, and I typically open up the applications beginning of September and have, take applications for a couple of weeks, and, and I seem to always do this every fall in September when I'm training for a fall marathon in October or November. So I love to like do everything all at once and just stress myself out to the max. 
So yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> so yeah, so I just um, just closed the applications um, on Friday and now um, building the team for right now. So next time the applications will open, we'll be next. Awesome. Time. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you for uh, letting me know about that. And yeah. so this is the Healthy Runner podcast and we have a passion for preventing injuries. Um, do you mind sharing? Um, you know, during your running journey, if there were any injuries that you faced and if so, you know, what did you learn most, um, from kind of overcoming that injury? Yeah, I'd say, um, 2016, 2017, I was having horrible pain, which I thought was my hamstring, um, from like my hip down the, you know, the back of my leg. And I had gone to numerous doctors physical therapist and, um, had some MRIs and CAT scans and found that I had a small herniated disc in my lower back. And basically one doctor told me I shouldn't be running. Um, and, it, and it was so painful anyway, especially going uphill, um, sitting was horrible. And so long story short, about 18 months of on off running because of the pain it took the fourth doctor to finally diagnose me with piriformis syndrome. So as you know, no, <laughs> as a physical therapist, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so, literally. <laughs> um, uh, literally, I mean, sitting was horrible. Driving was horrible. Um, and run running was horrible. So it's like, I would take two weeks off. I would try to run for a couple of days and I'd be in pain and say, okay, it's not better yet. Maybe I need to take another two weeks off. So that just went on for like 18 months until this, I went to see a physiatrist and she diagnosed me and had a cortisone shot and physical therapy for about eight weeks. And I was back to running. So, um, yeah, now, I mean, I do, I'm religious about doing strength and exercise for my piriformis and hamstrings and quads. And I'm so afraid of getting injured again. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, strength training is so important as a runner. So something I didn't, didn't care to do <laughs> at the so, beginning. So this is actually a great point because I get this question a lot about piriformis syndrome and everyone mm -hmm. goes to town on stretching their piriformis, stretching it, stretching it, stretching it, rolling it, stretching it. So you feel that it was the actual strengthening exercises mm -hmm. that you were doing that actually got it better. Yeah. I mean, the cortisone shot, took away the pain so I could do the physical therapy and do all of the exercises that I needed to do. And then of course, hand in hand that, I mean, that fixed it. And I do, I do all the band exercises and the monster walks and the clamshells and the you know donkey kicks and whatever, <laughs> everything, because it, I feel like it's knock on wood, keeping it, you know, stable for the past few years. So yeah, so awesome. that was not fun. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's definitely not fun. And I think, um, you know, your story is probably very similar to a lot listening to this. Um, when you have a running injury and you're not getting the answers that you need um, to get. So, you know, a lot of, um, you know, folks in the medical industry, um, no matter what practitioner it is, doctor, Cairo, PT, massage therapist, whoever you go to. And if they're not a runner or don't work with a lot of runners, um, usually get the answer of, you know, you got piriformis syndrome or you got hamstring tendon pain. And, you know, if you just stop running for like four weeks, six weeks and get treatment, and then you'll be fine and go back to running. And I think kind of your story is very similar to what a lot of people I work with is, you know, you don't get those answers. And if you ever are, you know, hearing from your medical professional, like the first thing they say is like, okay, you're going to need to stop running for weeks upon weeks. Um, usually that's not the best answer. And that's usually not the case. Um, sometimes like in your case, it sounds like it was a misdiagnosis. Um, again, if folks don't see a lot of runners, um, a lot of the running related injuries, such as even, you know, the big kind of things that if someone was listening to this and they were like, oh, I have exactly what you just described. You know, the other thing I, I need to mention is in the differential diagnosis would be proximal hamstring tendinopathy, 
So the top part of the hamstring um, can create a lot of the same symptoms that you mentioned. So just if you're listening to this, um, don't mm-hmm. just jump to the conclusion that you have piriformis right. syndrome. Um, but you know, a good examination, honestly, and there's a couple of simple tests that you can easily do to differentiate between those two. Um, you know, if you're not getting the answers, you're not getting relief, then definitely search for someone who works with a lot of runners. That'd be the first point that I heard from you. The second point is definitely, you know, the strengthening aspect of things. And, you know, a lot of times we think like piriformis syndrome, for example, is the piriformis muscles in spasm. But a lot of times people who have this, it's because of underlying weakness. And it's because this piriformis is actually almost lengthened. It's in a lengthened state and it's trying to work too hard when you're running. And then it goes into a spasm and creates pain but it's not short. It's not like a short, stiff muscle. So stretching it doesn't really help actually strengthening it and actually learning how to use it and use the surrounding musculature, right? So the glutes, the abductors, right? All your other hip stabilizers um, while you're running is kind of key to, you know, preventing it from going into that spasm and in that pain. Um, so I think that's an important point and a misconception that I hear a lot um, with runners. The first time, you know, they kind of say I have piriformis syndrome, what do I do? Um, so, and I love the third point, honestly, from what I heard from your injury is um, you've kept up with it. And like, as I yeah. say, you know, the rehab <laughs> exercise become the prehab exercises, right? Mm-hmm. So you should at some maintenance level, not as many times a week as you were doing when you were going to PT, maybe they gave it to you every day or five times a week or three times a week. Yeah. Like, you know, you should be dedicating. And especially if you're symptom free, you're healthy, you know, at least once a week, I recommend for my runners of doing their isolation exercises for that specific problem they had, whether it's Achilles pain, and you really have to focus on, you know, your calf endurance, or building up the strength, resiliency in your Achilles tendon, um, or if it's hamstring, or if it's piriformis, and you're working surrounding doing your monster walks, right, working the abductors, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, definitely maintaining that, um, at some frequency throughout your week as part of your training. And it's not cross training. It's not supplemental like PT, like I'm going to do my PT. Like yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't love to do that, right? We we're runners. Yeah. We like to run, but it's essential. And I love how you highlighted the strengthening aspect. Cause that is kind of If anyone's listened to any other previous episodes, we're all about strength training in order to run. Um, Mm -hmm. So I just love that. And I'm sure you probably value value that from your like, you know, gym background, right? And like where you came from, from being strong already, right? And having like foundational strength. Um, So I absolutely love that. Thank you for sharing um, about your little running uh, injury (laughs) history um, because we've all been there. Right. Like that's probably why you're listening to this podcast to begin with. You've had some running injury along the way, or you're looking to prevent them. And that's kind of what we do on this, you know, podcast, do like deeper dive episode. Like actually last week we did posterior tibial tendinitis, um, Mm. which isn't as common, but it's kind of like piriformis syndrome. I would say not like the common heavy hitters, but it is, uh, it is something that runners will face. So, um, so moving on from kind of your running injury, um, history, Um, have there been any, you know, has it been all roses and flowers and daisies? And like, I know I mentioned in the beginning that you qualified for Boston, which I will, I'm sure never do unless I meet my goal of like running, (laughs) running until I'm in the box and eventually I'm going to get old enough. Right. And maybe I'll be able to outlast the 70 year olds or hopefully the 80 year olds. (laughs) Right. And maybe I'll be qualifying for Boston at some point in my life. Right. But, you know, was everything always kind of, uh, accolades or did you have any kind of trials and tribulations along the way with your running? Yeah, no, it was not always rosy. (laughs) Um, you know, the first, I'd say the first half of my 10 years of running, um, first five years were just going out running, um, just running the miles, same pace all the time. I ran with a bunch of girls and, um, you know, kept trying to PR and, you know, when you first run and you first race, every race is going to be a PR for a certain amount of time. And then you get to a point where you're stagnant. Um, And so that was happening and it kind of all (laughs) came crashing down um, with the piriformis injury and just kept trying to PR and was stuck at certain times between the marathon and the half marathon. Um, 
And then after the 18 month injury or so, and I was just getting back to running again, feeling better from that injury, um, I ended up having to have a full hysterectomy. Um, and that was just devastating. Um, so yeah, I had to, it was about a three month sideline from running again after I was just getting back. And, you know, emotionally and physically, it took a toll on me. Um, and when I was able to start running again, I said, okay, you know, I just overcame this injury and had a life-changing surgery. And I think I want to hire a coach and I want to figure out why my times were stuck where they were. And I felt like, I don't know, rejuvenated after all of this. I said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to just make it a different kind of running become a different runner than I was. Um, so I hired a coach and um, that was June of 2018. And that fall I PR'd in the marathon in September. I ran Lehigh Valley and then I PR'd in uh, New York marathon in November. And um, yeah, the marathons, that's, I'm trying to think of my timeline that fall. So yeah, but it was, it was a good wow. 18 months to two years of just running was hard. And it was almost to the point of, I wasn't enjoying it um, with the injury and the surgery. And I needed something to get me back to really enjoy why I was doing it. Um, and that gave me something to look forward to and put goals in place. And so, yeah, so over the last three years, um, it's, my running has completely changed working with a coach and I've just found a whole new love for it and um, run for, you know, so many other reasons, but uh, that was an obstacle that I felt like I needed to overcome for myself. Yeah. So if you don't mind sharing with our audience, you know, what was kind of the most um, drastic change in working with a run coach versus what you were doing on your own in terms of your training. I know you mentioned kind of like every run was the same, um, which I definitely find a lot like, Hey, I was there too. Right. Like when we all mm -hmm. start out as a beginner runner, we just go out the door and we say we're running and we start our time or track it on our phone, open up a free app and just hit start. Um, and you just, start running at a specific pace, but can you just share like what was most helpful if we have some beginner runners out there that, um, you know, don't know there are other types of runs to do or how they should be kind of programming their week, um, weekly runs. Yeah. So, you know, and this is, I know training and putting different types of workouts into your runs are not for everyone. Um, some people just want to go run and run the same pace and don't care about their times or um, their mileage. And every day they go out and run and however far they run, that's, that's their choice. You know, um, for me, I, I wanted to change my running. I wanted to get faster. Um, I wanted a goal. Um, it just gave me something to motivate myself. So that being said, I'm working with a coach, I started incorporating tempo runs and speed work and fartlets and um, progression runs and um, learned how to slow down on my runs. Um, when I was always yes. running the same pace, it was too, wasn't fast, but it was too fast for my body to recover from every run. Um, so just an example back then I was, you know, maybe every single run was, um, somewhere between an 8.30 and a 9.30 minute mile. Knowing now, um, and based on my capabilities and my race times, my easy runs can range anywhere from 9.30 to 10.30 minute miles. So I'm running even slower on my easy days than I was as a less experienced runner. Um, and what yeah, does so that allow you to do though? It allows my body to recover on um, the easy days and the rest days. And then I'm able to push myself and really hit those hard paces that my coach is prescribing for me on the hard days. Um, and with all of that, it all somehow comes together magically um, on race day. And the PRs just kept, just kept coming um, after I started training with a coach because you don't, you don't, you don't think slowing down is going to make you faster. 
but it does. And incorporating those days where you can push harder paces, your body recovers and you can do that. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it because Shauna, this is definitely by far like the biggest mistake that I see runners make. And even our clients that we work with that we have to keep telling them to slow down. And it's so like, you know, not intuitive, right. To what our brains tell us. And they say, because we all want to get faster or not all of us, but those that have goals to get faster say, if I get faster, like I have to run faster. And I just love, like you are a shining example of someone who tried that approach of just running, going out and running and trying to run faster, but you hit the ceiling, right. In your capabilities Mm -hmm. And having the dichotomy in your runs between slow is slow, really slow, and then fast is fast. And then that's Mm -hmm. the secret sauce, guys. That's where the magic happens and your running fitness improves so you can actually be faster on race day. And I just love that, you know, you experience that. And definitely, you know, for those who um, either don't have the time to research and learn or like yourself, like I know you took the run coaching certification course. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, if you guys don't have the time to do that, then, you know, making that investment in a coach is definitely worth it and worth your while for them to be able to program your plan in a structured way and take the guesswork out for you. So you can actually maximize your potential as a runner, like you said, if that is your goal to get faster. And, and I also like the point that you said that it's not for everyone. And I would also like to stress that as well for those just starting out. Um, it might not be appropriate for you to start hitting the track and doing some fast intervals, um, at an eight or nine at a 10 scale, um, effort level, because then that's when you get injured. So building up the foundation of strength And then your base level of training and getting a lot of, you know, a good amount of miles and consistent running under your legs is key first before you really jump into, you know, some kind of, of these crazier workouts that, uh, Shauna mentioned. So, yeah, I love, I love that you've seen the benefit in that. And it is just something that I like to highlight because it's always an educational point. Um, pretty much during all my coaching calls, my clients. Um, and I know it's just something that people ask, like within our healthy runner community um, in terms of their pieces. And it's just a matter of being okay with being slow and just knowing like, Hey, if I go slower and I'm constant, I'm still constantly Shauna, like looking at my watch on my easy runs, like I was this morning and being like, yeah. all right, am I slow enough? Like what, you know, how's my breathing doing? Like I should be at a relaxed pace. I should be at a five or six. Um, I should be able to talk to someone next to me and being conscious of like getting, you know, staying slow, but not sloppy guys, uh, not sloppy and just working on your running form. So thank you for, uh, for bringing that up besides the, the, the major surgery that you had. Right. So that must've been definitely, um, pretty devastating. And I just love that you, you had a comeback story, right? You didn't just like pack it in and being yeah. like, cause I would imagine, I don't know a whole lot about that, but that messes with hormones and can kind of put yeah. you into like menopause. Right. Can it? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I would imagine, honestly, there are some runners out there. And so maybe, you know, someone who may be faced with this or maybe just had this kind of, kind of surgery or is going through menopause. We actually talked about this uh, recently on the podcast with our registered yeah. dietitian, Brooke, um, about kind of going through menopause and running and after menopause. Um, but I just love that, you know, your story is, you know, showing how you can be successful and even run better after it right? You've essentially right. been a faster runner and you're like yeah. hitting g- running goals. You never thought you can do in your forties. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. Tell me about the whole, um, BQ thing, because I know that's, you know, there's probably a lot listening to this too, that, you know, maybe might want to have that as a goal, right. To get a Boston qualifying time. And, um, was that something that you've always thought about? Was that something like always a goal of yours or did it just kind of, as you got faster, you're like, Hey, I'm getting kind of close to this. Like maybe I should try it. Yeah. I mean, 
when I first started running and growing up in Boston and going to the marathon every year, um, that was, I mean, to me, that was like, you know, the elite famous, like Olympic runners to me, like never crossed my mind. And even, you know, the first half of my 10 years of running, it never, like you just said, oh, I'll never qualify. Maybe when I'm 90, <laughs> you know, like it never, it never, I just never thought about it. And then when I did start running again after my surgery and just saw pretty quickly that changing the different workouts in my runs um, and that I was getting faster, I thought, well, maybe it could be a goal. But, um, and then it wasn't until that fall when I had a PR in September and I said, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I, maybe I could do it. And then I ran New York and had like another 20 minutes off my time. And then I was like, okay, this, I'm going to do this. And then I, I put my mind to it. Like, so that whole entire year was spent. That was my goal was to qualify for Boston. Um, so that was all 2019. So training to qualify that, that fall. Um, yeah, but it was, and then the that, pandemic happened. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so I, I did qualify in October at Bay State Marathon and um, with a 512 cushion. And then with the way the pandemic happened and the Boston Marathon cut the field size down from 31,000 down to 20,000. And so my cushion wasn't enough. You needed at least a 747 to get in. So I missed it by you know, two and a half minutes or so. Um, but since so what was that moment like, actually, tell me, tell me how you originally felt when you, was that like an email you got literally, or how does that work out? Um, when you qualify? Yeah. Or, or when you found out that the field changes. Oh, the, and, when the field yeah. changes. Yes. So we, so when I could register because I qualified. So when you register, and then I'm trying to think it was maybe like a week or two um, before you found out if you get in and yeah, the email, you know, basically said, um, we're sorry to inform you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah. And you know, with all of social media, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and I mean, everything was blowing up. Like, so even before I got my email, I was seeing that the cutoff was 747. Oh, okay. So I just, I knew it. Um, yeah, that was heartbreaking after, you know, um, a year and a half of working really hard and coming back after that surgery and finally putting my mind to it. And it's almost like I felt like it was taken away from me because crossing that finish line when I qualified, like that was the one of the most amazing experiences and feelings I've ever had. Like um, I didn't grow up doing sports or anything like that. So I felt like I won, <laughs> you know, and right. that was the best day. And so, and not only that, but with a five minute cushion back before the pandemic, that was, I mean, a given the biggest cutoff for Boston was a 439 in, oh, wow. I want to say, yeah, like 2016 or 2017. And because the cushion was so big, they ended up making the qualifying times five minutes faster. So even when I qualified, I had to run a five minute faster qualifying time. Oh my so goodness. I felt like I really did it, you know, right, right. And, um, and no one would have ever thought that five minutes wasn't enough. So, so like yeah. when you're registering, you're like confident, you're like registering, you're like, yeah, I'm registered for my Boston marathon. You're like submit, right. You're like, yeah, totally I mean, like I, got it in the bag. Yeah. I mean, yes and no. I, when I, the day that I qualified at the race, yes, I was like, no problem. I'm, I'm getting in. Right. I'm running Boston. You're like, I'm taking like yeah. 30 selfies of this race. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to remember this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, like 2021 was going to be, you know, but um, yeah. And then when they announced that they were cutting the field, I, I just knew in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to make it. The, the cutting the field and with five minutes and rumor all around social media was you're going to need eight to 10 minutes. So, wow. so I knew it that morning okay. but when the official email came, I mean, I cried, I cried. I was, I'm sure. I was really, really bummed, really bummed. Um, 
but yeah, it lit a fire under me. And, you know, I, even after um, 2019, I had started training because I wanted to PR again for 2020 and I was registered for Chicago and my plan was to go out and PR. And at that point, any PR is a BQ for me now. So I thought, okay, I'm going to qualify again in 2020. And then of course, Chicago was canceled last October. And um, so I deferred and that's what I'm running in three weeks. And so, yeah, so, I mean, I've been since 2019, I'm like, I, this is, it really lit a fire under me to have a big PR and a really big Boston qualifying cushion. So, <laughs> so I, I hopefully crossing my fingers that, you know, it'll be good for 2022, but um, my 2019 time, they are still allowing anyone that qualified in September of 2019 until now. So I still can use that time to register for 2022. And if the field goes back to 31,000, five minutes should be enough. Um, but I'm hoping to, you know, make it bigger in Chicago. So yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And it, I just saw you did your long run, I think last Friday, right? Did you do, mm -hmm. uh, you did 22? or 20 you did i did 20 20 20 yeah, yeah yeah um and that went well you felt felt good with it yeah i had a really i had a good run yeah I felt nice strong at the end even to pick up the pace a little bit but still stay in my slow pace range that i was supposed to stay in <laughs> um mm -hmm. yeah i had a good run and the weather was pretty still a little sticky friday but much better than like a few weeks ago when i ran 18 and it was like 90 degrees and yeah, I thought I was going to die. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully so, in three yeah. weeks from now in Chicago, it will be uh, it will be great conditions. I have a couple of my athletes running that um, race as well, um, so I'll be thinking about all of you guys. And yeah, our healthy runner community will be behind you, and you know, hoping Thank we get you. another PR. And I can't wait to see your uh, results on social there and see how it went. That's going to be like such a crazy weekend, right? Like between. Chicago, Boston, here locally, Hartford. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be a busy, busy uh, running social media weekend. It's going to be like a oh, flurry yeah. of like everyone doing these races, but it's exciting, right? We got like yeah. live races back. Um, so that's very, very exciting. Um, so what is uh next for stiletto running like what do you have in the in the plans and the works um where do you see this going from here i hope to continue just you know coming up with designs and um a lot of them come up on my runs i mean i feel like that's like the one time i just zone out and my wheels turn and um yeah i mean i'm always working on new stuff and um a little behind COVID uh, kind of caused some problems with production and manufacturing and things like that. Um, over the last year, um, shipping was atrocious um, for myself and for the people that I, you know, manufacture with. Um, so because some of my merchandise was delayed, um, it normally right now I'd be coming out with a whole fall line with tights and shorts and, but I, got my spring stuff so late it came like almost like June July um so I have all these brand new tights that no one has even seen because when I got everything it was already summer and I was already advertising all of my shorts on Instagram so yeah so I have a bunch of new styles that um you know people will be seeing because there haven't really been advertised much um because of the warmer weather so yeah but I'm always always working on new designs and I don't know, excited to see, you know, where it keeps going. That is awesome. So are you like me? Do you talk to Siri during your runs? Like, will you literally like pull out your phone and like set a reminder for yourself when a good idea comes? Because I do that all the time. I do. I do. <laughs> or, or, and this is something I shouldn't be doing, but I'll take my phone out and I'll type it in the notes. And that's really bad because I'll probably trip and hurt myself. Right. right. So yeah, yeah, so the Surrey thing can, is a good idea. You can yeah. set reminders. So I'll, I'll literally pull my phone out and be like, I don't want to do it now because she's going to probably set a reminder. Um, <laughs> you know, set a reminder and I'll just like whatever thought that came into my head. 
Cause I'm like, yeah. I don't want to forget this thought, but you're so right. Like, it's like, you know, the shower too, right? All good thoughts come in the shower yeah. or on a run, yeah. right? I'm sure yes. like many of our runners can relate to this um, yeah. and I don't want to forget it. So I always constantly do that. Um, and yeah, I can definitely um, relate to like the whole supply chain delay. And this was actually something that um, has been in the works for a while and, you know, I've been getting a lot of requests like, Hey, do you have any like spark healthy runner merch? And, um, been working with my guy for literally like six months now and, you know, issues with, like you said, product, getting product in. And so I'm actually super excited. It was like weird. It was like literally an hour before we hopped on here. Um, my guy said that the Healthy Runner store is actually available, but it is limited uh, merchandise that we're only going to do for a week launch for those that do want to rock a little Healthy Runner merch for their fall um, half marathon, marathon um, for your fall race. We are going to have singlets as well as hats. Um, so it's a very limited. Unfortunately, he couldn't get product to do t-shirts and, you know, a lot of different, uh, different items. Um, so we have some items. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, um, literally you have like four or five days before it closes down. So I will drop the link to that, um, in the show notes and then it will close. And then we're going to try to do, he thinks in October, like November, you know, merchandise and all of that should be, um, plentiful and there'll be a lot more. So then we'll, maybe we'll do a little kind of launch, um, and open a little healthy runner store prior to the holidays. Uh, so that is actually going to be going, I haven't even literally posted it cause I literally find out right when we, uh, hopped on. So I'll be sending a little message about that, um, for those that are, um, excited about that, but I am super excited to continue to see, you know, what you have in store and, I will literally like continue to laugh at all of your shirts um, and all of your <laughs> sayings. Um, you know, we're in the final stretch here, um, Shauna. And, you know, the last question I always ask my guests is kind of like, if you can change the, the one thing or the misconception about whatever topic we're talking about. So for, you know, what would you say if you can change one thing about the misconception of running clothes? Um, what would that be? Mm. <laughs> I know when I read your notes, I was like, hmm, that's a tough one. Um, the misconception of running clothes. They don't need to be boring. You don't need to wear boring clothes. I mean, there's so many fun things out there to wear. And my, my biggest thing, um, and I'm so into fashion outside of my running apparel, um, when you like what you're wearing, it makes you feel good about yourself. And that's, so important. And I feel like when I'm going for a race, I love picking out my race outfit. Um, I feel like, you know what, if you feel good about the way you look and what you're wearing for a run or a race and you, those days when you just feel good, it, you're going to do well. <laughs> so I, I do, I feel like, you know, like even standing at the start line in, um, in surf town, you know, I had a couple of people comment on my shirt and, you know, things like that, just, you know, you, conversation starters and makes you feel good and you're ready to go. So yeah, I, I feel like that's definitely um, misconception that you don't need to wear boring stuff. Fun things make you feel good. Yes. Oh, I love it. Fun things make <laughs> you feel good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Running clothes does not need to be boring guys. Um, so just kind of recapping here, Shauna shared with us kind of her running journey, how she was an adult onset runner, just like myself. And, you know, she's had some, some real success here as you know, a middle-aged master's runner. I always think master's is weird. Cause like, what are we the master of? Right. Um, right. but you know, running <laughs> in your forties and fifties, um, you know, going through some, you know, major kind of injuries, surgeries where you couldn't run for a while, um, qualifying for Boston, having the disappointment of last year, getting it kind of taken away from you, but you're still PRing, uh, marathons, you're running Chicago, which is super awesome. And you've grown an exceptional brand in stiletto running that, uh, has some really, really cute, funny, um, running clothes. That's very fashionable. Um, so, yeah, I, I give you a lot of credit, honestly, for, for doing what you're doing, taking the risk um, that you did take five years ago. And I thank you for taking that risk. I'm sure many of your customers thank you as well, um, because 
they would not be in fun, fashionable, like fun <laughs> running clothes on their races if it wasn't for you. So, you know, you're Thank changing you. lives. I don't know if you realize, like, I wonder if it's different for like running clothes, you know, brands. Like for me, when I help a runner, it's like, okay, I got rid of their pure form of Spain and now they ran, yeah. <laughs> you know, the first marathon. I'm like, yeah, like they're healthy now. Like, that's really cool. Like that makes me feel like I'm helping others. I don't know if you know, I am sure there are so many runners that like are so grateful you exist and stiletto running exists. So thank you for what you do for our running community. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's been, it's been fun. Um, Instagram certainly has given me the, the ability to, you know, like I said at the beginning, not just share my brand, but share the person and the runner I am behind the brand and have made so many great connections because of it. So yeah, absolutely. And so for those that uh, want to start following you, if they're not already on the IG, you know, what, what is the, your handle there? How can other runners connect with you? Yep. I'm at stiletto running <laughs> on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, and it's a uh, one L two T's <laughs> in stiletto. <laughs> when I first started the brand, that was one thing I had to make sure I was spelling it correctly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I spelled it wrong the first time I dropped that hashtag last week. Oh, funny. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and a lot of I, other it's, people it's, do because it's like a popular hashtag yeah, <laughs> with the two L's. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's definitely one of those words you have to uh, double check when you're <laughs> writing <Yep>. it out. <laughs> yeah. And then what about your website? Oh, my website is uh, same stiletto running.com. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So awesome. All consistent. Love it. Uh, yes. just like spark your training. I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what do you have for our listeners? Those that are listening to this right now, any, any special gift that you can offer yes. our healthy runner community? Yes. So we have a coupon code, um, and the coupon code is healthy runner. And, um, yeah, so you can head on over to the website and get a nice discount on, uh, on my website using yeah, the code so, healthy runner. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you'll get 20% off um, yes. using that code. So thank you so much for doing that for our audience. Um, just because I always like to, Hey, if we can get discounts, right. As a community. Um, and if it, you know, causes someone to be like, Hey, I want to get, you know, a little discount, like who doesn't like a sale. Right. Um, right. like you like to shop, right. I like to shop too. Uh, yeah. my wife will actually like joke around. Like I literally have more shoes than all the girls in my house. Um, so <laughs> it, it's actually pretty funny. Um, but yeah, who doesn't like a little discount there? So head over to stiletto running.com. Maybe coach Whitney, if you don't mind dropping that website in the um, comment box there. So folks can see that and the promo code as well. That'd be awesome. Um, so they can get their little discount there. So thank you for doing that. Um, greatly appreciate it. Um, and those of you who are right. listening to this, whether you're watching this kind of within our Facebook community, Healthy Runner, um, where we do live podcast episodes, deep dive trainings every week, um, hit that like, show Shauna some love, hit the little love button, the heart button. Uh, thank her for taking her time out. Like she's very busy, right? She's one man show here, one woman show, I should say. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, she's taking her time out to be able to uh, chat with us today and offer us some uh, great discounts on her swag. Um, so we appreciate that. And if you're watching on the Spark Your Training YouTube channel, um, thank you so much. Or crushing a run right now, listening to the podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button um, so you can get the next podcast episode downloaded automatically to whether you listen to an Apple or Spotify. Um, so I'm super excited to see your results here in Chicago. I know you're going to crush it and good luck, so. <laughs> good luck with the taper crazies and, uh, Thank keeping, you. you know, not letting your mind get the best of you during uh, taper time. And we're going to actually talk about tapering in, uh, next week, next week on the uh, podcast, coach Latoya is going to actually talk about tapering. Um, so for those that are going through that process, uh, Coach Latoya is going to be providing you some tips and um, to see how we keep our heads on straight because that's the hardest thing to do and to not actually go rogue on your coach and start doing more miles because <laughs> you just need to go for more miles because you're used to it now, right? right? <laughs> um, so we're going to talk all about tapering next week on the podcast. Um, thank you again. This was like super, super fun. And I, I just love your story. And thanks for coming on the thank show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was great. Thanks. 
All right, guys. So as always, how we end it, right? Uh, stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running. Until next time, guys. Bye.